Hey, what's up, everybody? T Tall Toby here, and in today's SolidWorks Power Move, we're going to talk about how we can design parts for 3D printing. We could actually move these parts together to try to figure out whether or not they're going to fit together or whether you're going to run into a little bit of a problem when you try to force this part through the hole in the other part. Now, this part actually comes from our library over at TwoTallToby.com. What this is, is it's a design for a phone stand, a 3D printable phone stand. And the inspiration for this design came one day when I was over at my brother's house, and he had this phone stand on his counter, and I took a picture of it. I really like this design. It's kind of like the Viking chair design, and he had one that was made out of bamboo. The problem with this is that it's entirely flat. And when I design phone stands, I like them to have a little bit of a lip here to kind of hold the phone in place. So I decided to draw up my own version of this. I actually created the plans for this design and posted them here at TwoTallToby.com. So if you go to TwoTallToby.com, you can access our full library of 2D to 3D challenges. You can see we've got over 250 challenges here in this library. And up at the top, we've got some free models for everybody to try, including this one, 26-01-01. So if you click into that challenge, you'll see that you've got all the plans that you need to model this thing up yourself, including the clearances if you wanted to give this thing a try yourself in really in any 3D CAD system. So how do we model up this part? Well, in this case, what I did was I modeled it up as a single part file, and I decided to use what's called a multi-body design. And I'm going to create a tutorial for this a little bit later this week. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get a notification about the tutorial. But basically what I did was I designed this whole thing as one single part file. I started out by designing this half of that part file. And then after I designed this half of the part file, I mirrored it, and then I designed the other part of this part file, all in one single part file. And the reason that's beneficial is because you can incorporate things like gaps for 3D printing. Like here you can see we've got a nice gap here between these two components. And that way when we go to slide these two components together, you know, they're not going to – you can't – when you 3D print, you have to design in some clearances. Otherwise, your parts won't fit together. But the question I had was, what about this lip? Is this lip going to work? And so what I did was I took these two individual bodies, and then I did a right mouse button on each of the bodies, and I said, insert into new part. And so what that does is it takes that one single body in my one single part file, and it turns it into its own standalone part file. And the reason that's important is because then I can take those two standalone part files, and I can bring them together into an assembly. So here you can see I've got these two part files here in the assembly and I can take this part and I can kind of move it around. It's totally free right now. So let me take the central plane of this part. You can see it's the right plane. And the central plane of this part, you can see that's the right plane. And let me mate them together. So now you see that these two parts are going to move together. And now we can get into a tool that's been in SolidWorks for a long time, but it's kind of underutilized. And that is here on the assembly toolbar, the move component command, move component. And this third option here that says physical dynamics. Now, when we turn on this third option here for physical dynamics, we can say that we want to dynamically check the clearance between all components or between specified components. And this is important because the geometry of your components is going to become meshed, and the more components you have, the, the slower the performance is going to be. So it's always better to use less components than more. But in this case, I've suppressed the phone, so I only have these two components. You can also use this slider here to increase and decrease the mesh for those dynamic 3D contacts. And when you're done, what you'll see is that this component will still move with the limit limitations of its mates, but when the solid geometry of this component runs into the solid geometry of another component, see, I can't move this component through the other component. So I added the one mate to center these two components, and now I can move this up here, kind of hook that in there, and I can see if I can maybe move this through that hole, and it doesn't seem like it's working. So what could I do? Well, I could go back to the original multi-body part file. Let's go back here to the original multi-body part file, and I can make a change to the original multi-body part file. Maybe instead of this being 45 degrees, maybe if I just kind of smooth that out a little bit, let me change that to maybe uh, 60 degrees and see what that looks like. Okay, maybe that'll give me a little bit better results. And so now I could go back here to the assembly and here in the assembly, I'm going to launch the move command, physical dynamics, and we're going to try and move these components again. Move this in here, hook it in, and 
Oh, yeah, there we go. That's what we were hoping for. And so if we just bring that thing in on kind of an angle, then it looks like we're going to be able to slide that thing through. Now, the ultimate moment of truth here would be to actually 3D, this, 3D print this thing out and see if it works. But what I like is that in the past, what I've had to do is 3D print one and then 3D print another, 3D print another. This way I can do some of that digital testing right here in the software. But let's give this a try. Let's 3D print this thing out and see what we end up with. So you can see that I've got the ledge here. You can see that I've got my phone back here. And you can also see that I've got this 3D printed version of the base here. So let's give this a try. Let's bust this off the plate here. So satisfying to hear that. And let's see what happens. So we've got these holes here. We've got the ledge. Let's put the ledge in and let's see here. Does it go? Does it go? Oh, it's pretty snug. It's pretty snug, guys. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go. And so that ended up going right through. That works. That fits through there. And you can see here, we can take this blue part now. We can slide this out the back. And then it's really just an angles game. If you can get it in here at just the right angle, you can get that to slide right in there. The nice thing about this design is that it does have these little lips here on the front. So that means if we take our phone and we go to put our phone on this design, it doesn't end up slipping off the front. If you don't have that little extra lip there on the front, that's what tends to happen with my phones. They end up slipping right off the front. So so I really like this design. The other thing I like about that, I didn't expect this until I 3D printed it or I didn't realize it, is that you've got these little lips here that fit right into these rectangular grooves. So that leaves you with this nice flat collapsible design so you can just put it in your bag if you're going on the road and you're not going to end up breaking your 3D print in transport. So I think this is a winner. But of course, guys, let me know down below in the comments what you think about this design. And if you want to give this design a shot yourself, you can visit us at twotalltoby.com. The challenge number is 26-01-01. If you want to see me design this part, just be sure to click subscribe and turn on your notifications. I'll make a tutorial for this one a little bit later this week. And if you like designing these types of parts, be sure to check out the links down below in the description for the upcoming training. We're actually hosting an instructor-led training class next month, February 2026, for advanced part design techniques. And this is going to cover things like multi-body and patterning and lofting and sweeping and all kinds of cool stuff for advanced part design. So if you want to take some training with Too Tall Toby, this is going to be a great chance next month, February 2026. And as always, guys, if you learned anything cool from this video, let me know down below in the comments. Be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe. And I will see you in the next Too Tall Toby Power Moves.